uh, Industry 4.0 lead here at John Deere. Uh, and in that role, uh, I look out to, to the future and understand what technologies uh, our factories need to uh, adopt and embrace in order to uh, really take advantage of digital transformation. I'm Tracy Schraven. I lead a global manufacturing technology team here at John Deere. We're really focused on leap improvements one to five years out that's going to differentiate our manufacturing. John Deere is really focused on feeding and sheltering the world. And as a technology company, we're really focused on leveraging all that is available to help drive that for our customers. Digital twins allow us to, to be uh, inclusive with our 75,000 employees globally. Uh, we're able to provide new contexts and actually bring in expertise from around the world uh, to solve the problems in it. As we think about our employee experience, especially as we've survived COVID, we've had to be a lot more creative to keep our employees safe and to be able to support them during the essential times when we're manufacturing, even when many other places are shut down. So really trying to use all the tools and technology available to us to enable their, their best productivity. For many years, uh, we've been uh, on a journey to uh, provide new capabilities to our customers. Uh, those are those are those individuals farming uh, all around the world. And this started with uh, GPS capabilities where they could uh, understand where they planted seeds, how they nourished those seeds, and then the yields they pr produced at harvest. And um, those are the, the unlocks that have allowed us to, to be leaders in precision agriculture and um, uh, really unlock in, um, capabilities to increase food production. We've been on this journey a number of years, but it really started with location tracking of the tractors in the field using GPS. And then as we got more sensors and more controllers, we were starting to aggregate lots and lots of data. We were able to send that to the cloud and allow our customers to build on that and gain better insights and run a better business. We've looked at Digital Twins as a engagement and an inclusion enabler. Uh, we've got employees uh, located all around the world, and with Digital Twins, these employees uh, have accessibility to engage in business areas and have conversations with, with those that uh, they would historically have to travel to. And on the, the other side with inclusion is it's allowing us to bring experts into situations uh, that are, are distant from them. Uh, and actually bring their capabilities and talents into those conversations. And so those have been really, uh, really big uh, drivers for us with Digital Twins. One of those drivers is the amount of data that we're starting to aggregate. As we explore 5G and we have more and more connected devices in our factories, we have so much data that we need to leverage. And part of that is the need for a contextualized view of that. So having the twin is the only way to interpret that data and use that in a different way. Additionally, we're able to use that to drive a better employee experience. We want to automate those repetitive tasks and make their job more enjoyable. Build uh, this remote support uh, solution, we used uh, free AWS IoT solutions, Greengrass, Sitewise, and TwinMaker. And we're able to install Greengrass at the various factories globally. Uh, collect all of the information's data streams from those factories and pass that information on to uh, the cloud through SiteWise uh, when, uh, when needed. Um, and then people uh, consume the data uh, through uh, TwinMaker uh, to be able to uh, connect to the individuals and uh, the people at the factories that they're looking to support. Our first use case uh, with Digital Twins is a project we call Connected Support. So historically, uh, we've got employees uh, in the factory that uh, when an issue arrives, get radio called to come over and, and address the situation or the, the issue at hand. And what we're unlocking right now is the ability to do that wherever you're uh, located. So when an issue arrives from uh, an operator in the factory, uh, they can request assistance uh, and we can have uh, experts, whether they're located just on the other side of the factory or somewhere different, uh, uh, remote in. And they get access to a camera so they can see what the operator sees and can control it. Uh, they get access to uh, a face-to-face -face video chat with the operator so that they can have a dialogue back and forth around what the situation is. Uh, and they have access to uh, the terminal that the operator is working from uh, so that they actually see 
uh, from the you know the system from the the lens of that operator, and through these kind of unlocks, we're able to really change the way that we're supporting the factories uh, today. As we look at what we've done with uh, remote support, we're really converting a very um, analog or manual process into data streams, and this concept is allowing us to change the way that we perform those. Uh, those tasks historically, and we're really interested in, in uh, applying the same concept to many of the other analog activities that we do in, in our factories. As we look at scaling this, we're pretty excited about where we've gotten to since this point, but we know this is just the beginning and we are excited to add a lot of other data attributes onto this as we cover all of our manufacturing settings and uniqueness, especially location and machine data to take this to the next level. One of the most interesting things is how we're better able to support the shop floor. So this means a quicker response time by enabling someone located maybe within the factory or further away or on the other side of the globe. Because the person answering that call can be equipped with the data and the context, the visualization of that exact workstation, as well as all the MES data. So it allows really the right expert to be able to help that operator as quick as possible. There's a number of reasons why uh, we're moving forward with AWS. Uh, the first one is uh, they operate uh, everywhere that we have manufacturing facilities. Uh, a strong second is uh, we have a lot of familiarity with AWS uh, uh, through Precision Ag, uh, as most of those services uh, are, are part of the AWS ecosystem, and we're trying to bring those capabilities from the factory, from the field into the factory. Um, and uh, you know, lastly. Uh, we have accessibility to a number of the development teams for the, the products uh, at AWS uh, that we can do uh, quick iterations on uh, the, the features uh, to make sure that they really align with the objectives we're trying to solve. So I agree exactly what Kyle said. With the precision agriculture history that we had, it only made sense to scale this for our factories. But another point I'd like to add is the R&D environment that we are able to work in. It's very collaborative and AWS is very willing to come into our lab space and work on future innovations tailored to our use cases. It's really important for our operators to feel supported. So this enables a better level of support than ever before, as well as automating some of those re repetitive tasks or things that might disrupt their day. And we want to eliminate as much of that as possible so they have a very streamlined day, which can be a lot more fun. In 2020, we had a, a key realignment of our organization, uh, which we call Smart Industrial. Uh, we went from a uh, product-focused organizational structure uh, to uh, organizing our company uh, into the business processes our customers undertake. Uh, the, the reason for that is to make sure that we stay focused on uh, the entire business process of, of our stakeholders opposed to uh, maybe sub-optimizing them for uh, specific projects or processes. Uh, we like to carry that concept forward into our internal operations, uh, into what we call uh, the manufacturing uh, production system. And in that, we're really focused on our manufacturing processes from you know, order intake to order delivery, opposed to uh, maybe uh, siloing our focus on uh, smaller subsets of the manufacturing process. Uh, and, and by doing this, uh, we really result in uh, better organizational performance uh, and fulfilling our customers' uh, needs uh, in a more streamlined way. The IT OT convergence that we are undergoing right now and the number of devices connected and how much data is starting to stream it's critically important that we leverage the cutting edge technologies available to help our manufacturer. So we need to use the cloud as well as those edge devices to really bring everything together. In this situation, the end user is uh, our production employees and the value uh, to, to those individuals is uh, responsiveness. They are, they are positioned to, to get the expert advice that they need when they need it uh, and allowing them to, to uh, build the, the equipment for our customers uh, timely so that uh, our customers can continue to fulfill uh, their uh, obligations with those pieces of equipment. To add on to what Kyle was saying, the external customer is really the beneficiary here. It is 
critical to their livelihood and their business to have on-time machines and a high quality product. And so all the things that we're doing to improve our manufacturing and as we scale this across the globe only enables that to become more important.